A reminder, if you like this video, subscribe to this channel, okay? That is a very green car. The media is out, the silks are ready, and guys are playing with Hot Wheels. It's the 2020 Chicago Auto Show, the 112th time it's happened. As usual, I'm doing my casual look around, not overly in-depth, but if you live in Albuquerque, it's much more convenient than getting on a plane. Unlike the Los Angeles and New York shows that have a lot of splashy world premieres, the Chicago show is a little bit more consumer-centric and focuses a little bit more on trucks. Not that there isn't new stuff here. I'm not trying to stop you from watching. For example, a new Jaguar F-Type is always welcome, East Coast, West Coast, or in between. This is not an all-new model. It's a mid-cycle refresh, but it looks good, and there are all sorts of new details. There's this um, emblem here that is uh, the Jaguar established 1935. And the price is lower, with retail coming in at just under 63 grand. That's for the P300 model with a two liter turbo four cylinder and rear wheel drive. Click the convertible box and it means the price rises by $3,100. Look for it this spring. Volkswagen abandoned the camper van segment. Mercedes takes over with the Weekender. A company called Driveridge will build this in South Carolina in collaboration with Seattle-based Peace Vans. There are enough options to fill the Grand Canyon. Built-in solar panels and a pull-out rear kitchen should be the popular ones. Based on a front-drive Metris van, the 2-liter, 4-cylinder turbo diesel makes 208 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque, so unlike old VW Westfalia vans, this one is able to get out of its own way. It can tow 5,000 pounds. No pricing yet. Stay tuned. All right, let's talk about trucks. The news was a little light this year. If you feel the Frontier pickup should have been redesigned, oh, I don't know, at least five years ago, Nissan offered up hope with the 2020 model at a pre-show event. It looks the same as the one built for over a decade, but gets a new powertrain with much better fuel economy. Frontier now comes with a 3.8 liter V6 engine, making 310 horsepower, and an all new nine speed automatic transmission. This previews the powertrain in the next generation Frontier. Both the outgoing manual and automatic trannies were five speeds. Nissan also had Brian Murphy's Frontier on hand, which just cracked a million miles delivering all sorts of stuff, including a large wheel of cheese, which is not unusual in Wisconsin, but this is Illinois. To thank Brian, Nissan is giving him a new 2020 Frontier. The truck looks to be in fine shape. As you'd imagine, there is somewhere here and there. Frankly, I don't know what's more impressive, a million miles or the fact that this isn't all rusted away. This part of the country is really tough on cars. The Jeep Gladiator will be available in a new Mojave trim, which is a desert-focused model with a number of enhancements, like special Fox shocks that make it better for maneuvering through sand dunes. It gets desert-rated badges. There's also a swanky new high-altitude model for both Wrangler and Gladiator with nice leather interior, if the most adventuresome thing you tackle is the Starbucks drive through uh, Sorry, didn't get shots of it. Toyota showed the 2021 Tacoma, Tundra, and 4Runner Trail special editions with emphasis on extra storage and convenience. Based on the SR5 models, choose between two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive. The 4Runner Trail comes with a Yakima roof basket and sliding cargo tray, plus a 40-quart cooler painted to match the truck. There are blacked out nightshade models too. I didn't get to those. A reminder, if you're dissing the Frontier, Toyota's trucks aren't exactly new either. Toyota rolled out the Highlander XSE, a sporty package that upgrades the trim, and there's a claim that the handling is more agile too. Available with the V6 powertrain, it should make rolling up to the kid's t-ball game just a little bit more interesting. The new Land Rover Defender shows up in the Windy City. This is the four-door 110 model with all sorts of rugged add-ons. I like the looks of this truck, especially the two-door 90 model. Want to off-road a Volkswagen Atlas, uh, which gets refreshed, or discover the safety tech on a new Toyota? You can do that at the Chicago Show. 
Kia had the refreshed Cadenza sedan on display. It and the Stinger are very overlooked because people are far more interested in crossovers and SUVs. Speaking of, the Kia Seltos, which goes on sale soon, is making its snow belt debut. Unlike Soul, it's available with all-wheel drive. I'll have a review of this soon, by the way. The GV80 is exactly what the fledgling Genesis brand needs. This is not a rebadged Hyundai. It's built on a new rear drive architecture, but yes, all wheel drive is available. One thing that's noticeable in person, the build quality is especially tight and crisp. The cabin has its own ambiance. Genesis is not trying to copy Mercedes, Lexus, BMW, or Audi. It looks like money. There's an optional third row should you need it, but be warned, humans with legs won't be all that happy there. The US should get turbocharged four-cylinder and V6 engine choices. There's no pricing yet, but the GV has a great vibe. Buick will sell the current model Encore alongside this much nicer looking Encore GX model. I'm sure there's no chance at all that this will confuse consumers. From the people that brought you Chevy Volt, and Bolt. Chevy brought the new Trailblazer. Uh, those that remember the old one will grumble about the badge landing on this small crossover, but at the very least, it gets all-wheel drive and a 9-speed transmission if you upgrade to the 1.3-liter turbo engine that delivers 155 horsepower. Chrysler's Pacifica is not an SUV, I know, but I'm grouping it here. Anyone who owns a van knows that they make family life easy. The weather outside is frightful in Chicago, and the refreshed Pacifica is now once again equipped to handle the white stuff. We're bringing back all-wheel drive after 18 years, and it's in conjunction with Stone Go. So you keep Stone Go and have all-wheel drive. It uses a drive shaft to the rear wheels, not an electric motor. The plug-in hybrid remains strictly front drive. And the second announcement today was that we have 97 standard safety features on the Pacifica for 21. More standard safety features than any vehicle in the industry. Not any minivan, but any vehicle sold from anyone at any price. You might have noticed the updated front and rear ends too. There's also a new top tier trim dubbed Pinnacle. It gets a unique interior look with a different center console. There are lumbar pillows in the mid row. I gotta wonder how long it'll take the kids to start chucking those at each other. Finally, Uconnect 5 is the newest version of the very well done user interface. It adds Alexa integration and wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Subaru didn't bring anything new, but it did bring puppies that people can adopt. <laughs> this one is not helping his chances of going home with anybody. I uh, have to say though, this classic brat with a homemade camper made from reclaimed materials was a huge hit. All the auto writers were talking about it. In the past, Chicago hasn't been really big on electrification news. There was some this year. Nearly every manufacturer was showing off an EV here. Porsche brought the Taycan Turbo S to Chicago for the first time, and there was a steady stream of people oogling it. Audi brought the e-tron. I got my first ride in Ford's new Mustang Mach-E at a press day event after waiting a long time in line. There's a lot of interest in this EV. And inside of the building here, it's pretty cool. <laughs> but to really assess a vehicle as a professional driver, we're in a, you know, we're in a building on a polished concrete floor, you know, so yeah. it's tough to do. But in here, it's pretty cool. Yeah, good torque. It was a very short ride and a very quick one, but even after just a minute in the car, I can tell you it's pretty promising. While the very attractive Sonata has been out for a couple months, there's a new powertrain. For now, Hyundai is ditching the plug-in hybrid system and going with a non-plug-in hybrid, and the fuel economy is as appealing as the design. Uh, it gets up to 52 combined, which for a mid-size sedan, that's you know a wheelbase of 111 inches, fairly big footprint. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. Oh, and the roof? Solar panel, um, it actually powers both the 12 volt uh, and, the, and the hybrid battery, kind of like a, a trickle charge. Um, we've calculated about, you can get about two miles a day extra, uh, free, so to speak, from that, because it's charging the battery. 
The Civic Type R has been a big success for Honda, and it's getting a refresh, though you'll have to be very familiar with it to see the differences. Some of that is just the uh, the, like the color cued strakes you see at the bottom, kind of in the uh, in the air dam area. You also see that in Civic Si and the Civic Hatchback as well. So it's just kind of updated with the rest of our Civic lineup. And then things that you may not know unless you really get a measuring stick out um, is going to be the the uh, the grill itself is wider and taller, and a lot of that's intended to uh, to cool the car down faster. You know? uh, and there's more stuff coming for sure. The things that you want to know that I can't tell you yet. I would just say watch out in the next couple weeks because there's going to be some big news coming, maybe some special editions. Uh, who knows what else could happen. While I'm on performance, the Blue Oval folks revealed the Ford GT Liquid Carbon at a slightly higher price point than the Honda. The visible weave of the carbon fiber shows through in all its beauty and intricacy. Each of the dozen or so produced annually is sourced from a single batch of carbon fiber, and the pattern is painstakingly matched up from panel to panel. It's stunning. Why do we do it? Because we can. And, uh... You know, that's what makes, I think, the Ford Motor Company uh, special and great. All GTs get a slight bump to 660 horsepower. The liquid carbon model will be available to those who are in line for a GT at an undisclosed premium. But you know the line, if you have to ask the price. Some manufacturers are ditching auto shows, and Chicago is no exception. Established brands like BMW and Volvo did not display. Cadillac doesn't always appear, but it did attend. No new Escalade, though. The few of those screwed together are in Los Angeles, carrying celebrities to the Oscars. Uh, Porsche was there. I love the 718 Boxster Spider. And the Cayman GT4. Uh, let's linger. And moving on. Some odds and ends, Jaguar built a Hot Wheels track that ended up breaking a world's record for the most loop-the-loops. Would have thought far more than eight would be needed. I'm doing a story about it in the coming weeks. I was going to make a joke about the new Hummer EV being a bit much, but some people might believe that this is really it. I will err on the side of caution. The big surprise trend at the show, tail fins are back. Okay, no, but there are a number of classic and collectible cars here. Check this one out, the 1950 Studebaker Ice Princess. Hmm, I dated one of those long ago, but that's a different story. This, kids, is what the future was going to look like, but bubble canopies never caught on. Not much protection in the event of a rollover, that's for sure. And this car is amazing, the Golden Sahara II. Uh, I don't even remember the Golden Sahara One. Designed by George Barris, there's all sorts of excess to love here. The entertainment system, high fidelity audio, and a way to call your agent. The best part? These tires were specially recreated by Goodyear for this car at $50,000 a pop. The lighting is all new though. Uh, think about how these would look on a Tesla. And check out the Corvette Nomad. Wrapping up here, let me just say this. I don't think people do enough research when buying a new vehicle. They're very expensive these days. And Auto Show is the best way to do your research because everything is fresh in your mind. You don't have to go from dealership to dealership and deal with them. You can bring the kids along, see if they fit in the vehicle, and you'll find things that aren't on your radar screen. Maybe buy something that you didn't even consider. So Auto Shows, they really rock. A reminder, if you like these videos, subscribe to this channel, okay? I came all the way to Chicago to do this for you. <laughs> uh, I got some pizza too. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.